Hey everybody and welcome to the Blazer Kickstarter launch. It's Bensky here uh, from the 77 Publications and um, what a fantastic um, show we got for you tonight. Basically in a few minutes time we will be pressing the big red button. Um, Yay. That's, a, that's a joke in our in our families because <laughs> I unfortunately pressed fantastic. our very first Kickstarter a couple of days early but there's no chance uh. of that happening tonight because the news is out that Steve McManus um, is launching his first comic um, in quite a while. Uh, and we'll be doing it live tonight. So I'm going to hand over and say good evening, Steve McManus, and how are you tonight, mate? Oh, thank you, Ben. Good evening, everyone. I'm fine. Yes, I'm, I'm delighted to be here. <laughs> Excellent. It's going to be such good fun tonight. So, Steve, yeah. um, I've got I've got this book here, uh, The Sheer Glam Conspiracy. Um, mm -hmm. And my story about this is that you very kindly sent me a copy. Um, and I read it on on, on the, my way to my honeymoon. Um, and at thirty thousand feet, Steve, you are the funniest thing that you can have in a in in a, in, a, in a cabin, okay, in an aircraft. So absolutely, it was just brilliant. I laughed and laughed and laughed. And um, I just wanted to ask you basically a little bit about Sheer Glam. So it contains mm. most of the scripts that appear in Blazer, but obviously the preamble of all of that is a story that takes place um, in a comics company. Good Enough Productions, um, circa about 1973. And I wondered yeah. if, if you wouldn't mind, is there any truth in the plot? And if and if there is, maybe you might just divulge a little bit, um, explain a bit about the plot and obviously what the link is with Blazer. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so the so, question yeah. is, um, if, you give, um, if you give us an understanding really about the basis of the novel and what the background is about Sheer Glam Conspiracy. Yeah, well, the, the plot involves um, a, a murder, which, uh, as far as I know, never happened at Fleetway. Um, obviously, the book is based on my time at Fleetway, 1974, when there were the likes of comics such as um, uh, Lion, Tiger, Valiant, Buster, um, the Humor comics, and uh, some girls' comics. And, that, that, that there was a, a, a girls magazine called a Pink, which I always wanted to get to know the staff there, but they didn't really seem interested in a, a guy from the comics. So really what The Sheer Glam is about is it's a love letter to those times. And by that, I mean the characters, not the fictional characters in the comics, but the actual characters who were editing those comics, drawing them and writing them. And uh, to my young mind at the age of 21, these guys were, you know, all in their 50s, and uh, it was kind of like uh, going to a museum and seeing a trip back in time to see how people behaved and what they wore. And um, it was, it was, uh, I, 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 um, I, I miss it terribly. It is a novel that has a slightly explosive ending, and well, yeah. there's a link there with the, the, the title that didn't actually get published and the premise of the blazer uh, comic isn't it that actually someone close to us has found the the missing stock that went that went that, that went disappeared in 1974 yes um I, I i don't think we should name her name just at this juncture because <laughs> she found it on a drunken night out at the singapore comic convention 2019 um maybe she'll own up to it uh, during the course of this evening but um, um, yeah, it's um, it's how can I say really? It's just um, uh, uh, it was a pleasure to write, and uh, I think we'll be talking to some of the artists in a minute who have had the, the kindness to draw the scripts, which I always kind of figured I hoped would happen anyway. Absolutely, and we've got some great people um, on board in the comic. Um, so it's been quite a while, Steve, since you've um, created your own title. Um, my understanding is that the Judge Dread magazine was was that the last title that you're credited with with creating back in eighty eight? Sorry, eighty nine, ninety. Well, yeah, to an extent, but I rang up John Wagner and said, "Hey, we can we've got permission to launch a Judge Dread uh, title. You know, would you like to?" come on board and be the editorial uh, brains behind it. And, um, after some thought, he said yes. And Alan came on board and uh, the third writer we had for issue one was Garth Ennis. So there, uh, we ha I didn't have to do much kind of like creative work on that. And then it was just a question of um, finding the artist to draw these scripts. And again, 
if you ring someone up and say John Wagner wants you to draw this script, they're more often than not not going to say no. Mm. Um, and uh, I think uh, John McRae anyway drew Garth's um, story about Chopper. So um, and Jim Bakey was there for Alan. So that was very easy, very easy. The magazine. I wouldn't say I created it, but facilitated it. Uh, that's very. That, I think that's very generous of you. And obviously, um, credit amongst um, professionals is um, a title which is you as an employer given. Um, but I basically see you as a creator of Blazer. Um, what would you say the differences that you've encountered since you've um, been actively involved in launching comics and launching a comic amongst a, uh, in a pandemic in the 21st century? If you'd like to kind of run through a couple of differences that you've spotted on the way. Well, that was easy. You did all the work. <laughs> I wrote the scripts. You found all the artists. You and the 77 team. It's a lot easier than the magazine, I can tell you. <laughs> so when you were doing the magazine, John, um, sorry, Steve, did you have to go um, and, and, and sit in an office with John Wagner and all the guys there? Or, or was it working by distance then as well? Uh, John came down for an initial meeting. He um, looked at me rather um, suspiciously, but... <laughs> Once I told him that I had the, the title, Judge Greg, the magazine, he kind of warmed a bit to me, softened, and then um, went away and, and came up with some great scripts. So we had one initial meeting, and then I, I don't think I saw him again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so listen, we've talked about some of the artists, and I'd like to um, introduce... Um, someone I think we all know who's talking about Judge Dredd is really making a name for himself and has the last two or three years. Um, he's also credited obviously with two books under his belt with John Wagner, uh, the Dread Father, um, as Rock, the artist for Rock uh, the Reds and Rock of the Gods. So if it's possible, we'd like to introduce um, Dan Cornwall. Are you there, Dan? Can we, can we see you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm here. There hey, you go. Hey, mate. You are hey. welcome to plug that. You can plug that, Dan. <laughs> And how are you, Dan, this evening? You well? I'm very good. I thought the meeting was at half seven, so I, I, I uh, my wife came in and told me, aren't you going live in a minute? I was like, no, I've got half hour. And then she goes, no, it's at seven. And I checked the message. Oh, <laughs> so I'm rushing around, <laughs> getting the beer. Mate, I'm sorry, Dan, <laughs> have we got the same Dan Cornwall, who's an artist? Because I'm only asking, because that's a very tidy either workshop or a study, mate. Is, is, have you been busy tidying up your books and getting your helmet polished and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Does it look like it? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, it was. It, it, I, I did the studio up about. Oh, it start a lockdown, I think. It, it, give the paint and put some shelves in, and um, it was kind of perfect timing because everyone's got these bookshelves behind them now in these uh, live video calls. So it's just timing. Fantastic. So I appreciate. Actually, um, you're still mid. Uh, drawing aren't you uh, on the on on the story that you've got with steve but anyway listen yeah. i'm going to take a little background here and i'd like steve just and you and steve to have a little chat and we'll just listen in and to see to, to see what you guys have got to say about blazer okay it's all yours steve okay hi dan how you doing hi how are you getting on with the script yeah it's it's all um roughed out pencils you know um thumbnail um i'm looking forward to doing it because you know i've done that first page that splash page which um, was fun, and, and like researching all the Second World War uh, 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 Japanese military equipment's quite fun, and coming up, you know, designing the characters because it's such a seventies, eighties kind of character, um, and it's totally different to what I've been doing recently because most of the stuff I've, I've done has been, in, in the case of Judge Dredd, futuristic. So, um, and doing Jungle Warfare, who can't enjoy just knocking out a bit of jungle. What's your drawing? Yeah. A bit of jungle. Um, I didn't know that, I didn't know your passion actually was the naval side of things as it were, ships and Oh um, yeah. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd love to do a, 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 um, a, a Second World War Bismarck style story, you know, something along those lines. Yeah, or wow. Das Boot. Well, you, das Boot. Do you have many models of ships in your, in your studio yeah. or? I've got Titanic there, which is too big to, to drag over. I've got um, Bismarck up there, which is yet to be made because I haven't had the time. And I've got the Yamato up there as well to be made. Oh, yeah, nice. Plenty of models to be made. I just don't get the time to do them. Yeah, it's, it's funny how many people who draw and write comics actually have a kind of side 
passion of making models. And oh, in, in, in the Sheer Clan conspiracy, of course, uh, the, the comic um, destroyer in that office there, they had a huge model of, I forget the boat, the ship now, but um, uh, um, that's, uh, it's, I think it kind of soothes the artist and the writer to a bit of gluing and stuff, you know. Oh yeah, I think especially through the through this lockdown, I think a lot of people have found these hobbies, haven't they? And and modelling, yeah. and I've, I, I've I read recently that Warhammer sales for these little miniatures, Warhammer sales have gone through the roof um, due to due to everyone find re, rediscovering hobbies and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. So um, I wanted to ask you, what what are you inking? Um, this particular story with you're you're drawing um godwin's law aren't you yeah which is about kind of an unlikely alliance in the world war ii jungles of burma between a a baptist and a nurse as far as i recall as the writer (laughs) (laughs) Uh, it was lucky because i had to go through the script again because i started drawing the female character and for whatever reason in my head i had her down as a nun (laughs) <laughs> so I started drawing this nun firing this submachine gun and whatnot. <laughs> and then I, I, I quickly read the script again. He goes, it's not a nun, it's a nurse. And I had to ask you, didn't I? I had to ask you, how do you want her dressed? Do you want her in a nurse's uniform? <laughs> and you went, no, go for some civ- civilian clothes. But um, yeah. yeah, yeah, I did the it all traditionally. I, I did it all, yeah. all traditionally because um, um, I just like, uh, you know, it's it's... it's it's a physical thing, isn't it? It's nice to have a physical thing, and I I, I respect the digital uh, 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 point of view when it comes to mm. drawing comics. But I do like the physical, and people like to see the physical and you know, conventions and the like. Fantastic. Okay, Dan, thank you. I, I think I, I need to move on now to the person on your right, which will be Colin Maxwell. Hi, Colin. Hi there, Steve. <laughs> now, where are you turning in from? Up, up north somewhere? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just, just north of Edinburgh. That's Edinburgh. Ah. <laughs> and uh, as you're, uh, you've got the, the really nice script, because it's quite easy. <laughs> Derringer and Son. Yeah, that was, that was a fun script, um, for sure. Of course, I've got my sheer glamic conspiracy. I have to say, I read the book. And then didn't read any of the scripts <laughs> until <laughs> much later on. Um, and you, you were just saying about, uh, or somebody was just saying about Dan's room being very tidy today. Yes. And um, I, I, I have to say, I have had a, had a bit of a tidy today as well. And while I was tidying up, I discovered my first drawing, my first oh. inked drawing of the helicopter that's on the cover. So, uh, yeah. Some lucky person might get that at some point. <laughs> Uh, you're, you're, I, can you're, you're still, I think yeah. I think that Steve should get I think Steve should get that because you've kindly offered um Colin that um quite a few of your prelims are going to be included in the page and 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 the artists are doing this so Dan Cornwall's also offered a page but I just can I just also say Dan Cornwall didn't you think when you received the book or when I sent you all the scripts that you were doing all of them <laughs> yeah <laughs> you, 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 you sent me the email and the, and the, uh, obviously the file and um I just went to the print. I just sent it to the printer to uh, to, to, to print off, and um, walked out to make a cup of tea. And as I came back, it was still printing. And, um, it printed <laughs> and this was after 30... you agreed that you would do it, wasn't it? So you yeah, thought yeah, you were doing yeah, yeah. And it. And it printed thirty pages, but double sided. And I got this word out, and I was sitting there going, and that's, I sent you a quick was it an email or a message saying, <laughs> I, I, "Am I doing all of this?" He's like, no, 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 you're safe. It's just a one. You've just printed out the, the, the entire script for the book. Yeah. <laughs> well, you've still got some to do. So let's go over to Colin, who's already done his pages, Dan. So there you go, mate. OK. <laughs> yeah, yours, Colin. Colin, Colin had fun. He could do some stuff in Las Vegas, couldn't you? Um, and helicopters, uh, more hardware. In fact, Dan had hardware and Colin had some hardware. Um, yeah, La- Las Vegas. In the seventies, that was interesting to kind of kind of go and research. I was amazed at how many YouTube videos there are of people just walking around ca- casinos in the in the in the in the seventies. It's pretty amazing. Um, and uh, like I was saying, I had a bit of a tidy out today, and I was 
kind of found a few odd illustrations. This was Derringer's office. Uh, yeah, a, I love his office. A very first pencil sketch of, of the office, which changed yeah. a little. It did change a little mm. bit from there. You, you suggested putting a, a big fan on his desk. And I, I, yes. I'd, I'd wondered what kind of fan, because I, I thought, is that a comics fan? or? Is that... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the, there's a theme running through through this because I said to Dan Cornwell, uh, "Can we make them sweat a bit to show the jungle?" And here it's me saying to you, "Can we show these guys in the on the west coast of America sweating with like a fan?" Yeah, um, <laughs> so, so it's Steve's, like, a, Steve's like sweaty people. <laughs> yes, I get, yes. That, that was a kid, the first first drawing way back in I don't know August or something, and then and then it turned into this. Mm. Yeah, the guy on the sofa is uh, a Vietnamese um, orphan yeah. who uh, the hero adopts. It's a really good story, I must say. I don't know who wrote it. But at this stage, with Dan and Colin, the body count, I think, is 10. Dan, that story, <laughs> he had to draw nine people dead. Oh, and three chaps. Oh, 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 I mean, people, uh, uh, opponents. Um, so, yeah, the body count is 10. Colin, uh, well, thank you very much for drawing all that. Um, I see you made me the hero look like me. Uh, yeah, that, that, I, I, I was kind of wondering what, what does the character look like, and you kind of just had made it as Magnum in the seventies. So I thought moustache, and then yeah. I thought, you know, why, why don't I just make it make it um, Steve, you know, back back in the day, and and yeah, he does kind of look a bit like you. Well, I think uh, yeah. So thank you very much. Um, Colin, and I'm sure we'll come back to you, but we need to move on to another artist in the house who I cannot see, Peter. Peter Weston. Hello, yeah. Now, we don't often have a BAFTA award winner in these Zoom meetings. Would you care to explain yourself? Uh, yes, I come from an animation background. Um, probably some of you uh, have heard of my father, Mike Weston who worked, actually, Steve, when he first joined Fleetway on Valiance, he met my dad, who very rarely went up to London, um, because he, as, as all the comic artists know, they're always sitting at their desks drawing. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, my dad said to me, don't follow me into comics. I mean, the, the great thing was he worked from home and I could get home from school and look over his shoulder and see this amazing artwork coming out. And I just naturally thought, well, that's what I'm going to do. But anyway, around about 16, he said, I wouldn't do it. It's poorly paid, long hours. Try animation. Uh, which actually turned out to be long hours and quite poorly paid. But... Um, <laughs> I, I managed to sort of sustain that for quite a few years until around about 2000, strangely enough. And, um, and then the bottom fell out of drawn animation, really. I mean, it, uh, by that time, computer animation was really taking over, especially when Toy Story was released around about that time, 2001, maybe. Anyway, just... As a bit of luck, and I won't bore you with it, but I, I, someone took a chance on me doing storyboard work. So I didn't really know how to do it. I mean, there's a whole film grammar that you really should know if you're going to do storyboarding, and I didn't know it. But you know, you learn on the job, and um, you know that that took me right up to about 2016 at which point I wasn't enjoying the work I have to admit it was getting I got stuck in a bit of a rut really but anyway one of the guys that I worked with had taken a shine to me he was very impressed by the fact that I'd worked on the film Who Framed Roger Rabbit in the 80s and he was a member of BAFTA or he was on a BAFTA committee and he said, look, we usually give this BAFTA, it's children's BAFTA, by the way, um, we usually give the special award, they have a special award, to a director or a producer. And he said, look, for a change, why don't we give it to a backroom person, you know, someone who just slogs away year in, year out, 
Um, and he says, I'm gonna, I propose Pete Weston. So I was put on a list uh, because they went for the idea and uh, amazingly they decided, yeah, give it to him, which is a nice, almost like a gold watch because that was the end of my career. But now, Peter, I think you're starting a new career as a comic yes. artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you're open for business, aren't you? Sorry? You're open for more scripts. Yes, I have been talking to Mr. Uh, Healy. Yeah, he's, oh, uh, he's due to get one on uh, Tuesday. I've written the first two pages now, actually, already, Pete. Oh, I'm really, is this... really, really looking forward to it. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's terrific. OK, Peter. Um, uh, we probably come back to you, but you, yeah. as I understand it, uh, have grabbed the centre spread of Blazer, so you've got the colour pages. Oh, so the rest is black and white, is it? Of course. Yeah, we can't we can't afford colour all the way through, Peter. I don't know what you think <laughs> this is. <laughs> well, the seventy-seven is virtually all colour. <laughs> yeah, but that's like you know. Come on, mate. We. Um... <laughs> I don't even know if we can afford a front cover, to be honest with you. I think we're just using oh. bog roll, mate. You know, seriously. <laughs> yeah. Please, it came out in 74, right? So the 77 was a bit later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, in the way, anyway. you know, I'd, I'd, I'd like it to be like the old Fleetway comics, but then Vanity says, yeah, but I put a lot of effort, Andrew <laughs> <laughs> has put a lot of effort into the graphics. And you think... Okay. Talking I mean, my about dad Andrew. always he always used to complain. He said, God, that paper they print on, it's it's bog roll, you know. And he said, you know, I do my damnedest to get the blacks, you know, really good blacks. And what does it come out like? Grey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you, Peter. Talking of Andrew, I hope Andrew's not going to be coy. <clears throat> Where is he? I'm here. I, I can't see you. Um, so Andrew, not only have you being the designer of the features yeah. and the cover, but you also found time to uh, draw one of the scripts as well. Yeah. Uh, this being the Sheriffs of Nottingham. Um, would you like to tell us a bit about... <laughs> it's a quite a boring script, actually, and it's a lot of headshots, but I think you, <laughs> you, you, you passed the test. Sorry about I that. Got, I got <laughs> the boring one. Yeah, you did, but there's no murders. <laughs> Um, Steve Rabbit no, knows how to sell a thing. Yeah, there's no jungles. <laughs> oh, uh, you didn't even get to Las Vegas, did you, man? You just got <laughs> to, to we Nottingham. Were in, we're in two Nottinghams, aren't we? We're in Nottingham yes. in the States, and it's a it's basically a, a body swap. Somehow yeah. in the, the mind of Steve McManus, when these guys get their teeth extracted, they do a body swap. So we've got two coppers two sheriffs one i've sort of drawn a bit like george roper from george and mildred that's it to carry on with the um the 70s sort of vibe but i i sort of embrace the try to emulate more of a 70s you know what would the comic look like in 1974 and um, with the typeface and everything but also as steve said i i designed it so I really threw myself into that sort of battle action mm -hmm. style. Yeah, it's been so much fun. Oh, more background. I, I love the cover. It's got that action red and yellow uh, uh, vibe. Uh, what um, what seems... brought it to life is when Dan sent in his first page and I painstakingly cut out the motorbike. And, and when, yeah. it, when, it, when it was put on the cover, it just made it pop I mean I know I know Ben when Ben saw it he was very um thanks he was very pleased with it uh, oh, I was thanks very much Andrew um you know one one sorry, thing you can't sorry Ben I just need to end by saying um the uh, the strip that uh, Andrew has drawn, the Sheriffs of Nottingham, the, the concept is stolen from a PG Woodhouse short story um, where <laughs> set in Hollywood, you can imagine a young child star is swapped with his um, producer. So the child star can now go around bossing people. And it's, it's, I highly recommend it as a, as a short story to read, but that's where I got the idea from. Sorry to dump, to send you damaged goods 
notes, Andrew. <laughs> no, no, I, I really enjoy drawing the, the story. Oh, it's excellent. It's not boring at all. We get, um, we, get the, we get the sheriff shooting a tramp's kneecap. <laughs> you got that on the cover. You got that got on that, the cover. That's on the cover, yeah. Left kneecap exploded. Yeah. And then some, you know, some very sort of right um, 1970s characters. It's great um, fun. But, yeah, th there's um, this Texan guy. His name's Todd Steiger. He's got one great line that I'm really proud of, where he yeah. says to this kind of Nottingham uh, troublemaker, shall we say, he says, you're a, you're a big hat with no cattle, son. Yeah. And that apparently is a Texan saying, you've got a big hat, but you've got no cattle to back it up. That's just fantastic. You can see where I, I just, I nick everything that you see before you with my name on it. Yeah. <laughs> and I think I've done that bit. Well, Steve, there's one other person who's joining us from several thousand miles away. Can you, can you imagine who it might be? Well, not Brendan. I'm afraid, I'm not afraid, so I'm very proud to introduce and say he's the, <laughs> he's the art editor of the 77. And also, did he not, also, is he not the artist who start, who finished his strip months before everybody else and deserves a special round of applause? Well, he is barred, but I suppose we can let him back in. Okay, the floor's yours, Brendan. Good luck. You want me to clean it? <laughs> Hello, Brendan. Yes, you hey, were Steve. first, and then you were first in and first out. <laughs> That's right, yeah. I, I'd like to say, um, too, back to the bog roll and the, the horrible letterpress printing, is because I grew up with that, I absolutely loved it, and um, and I loved the the 64 or 48 colour printing that the American comics had back in the 70s, and and, and it's completely irrational, but, um, yeah, <laughs> I really, really like it. Um, so... So for the digital bonus of um, uh, to, to add to the the blazer, I've um, popped um, the tinkling triangles back into into um, dodgy grey looking black line work with um, with uh, patchy uh, you know not not full coverage of the of the of the the blacks never cover in full do they? There's always texture coming through and um, and uh, put the, uh, the the edge of the um, the bog paper with the uh, the uh, serrations as well. So I was quite pleased with that. Can, can we ask then, um, Brendan? Do you think we should ask Andrew? Is he he's the is he the um, edit, the art editor for for, for Blazer? Yeah. Um, <laughs> did, are you putting some Bite. foxing on the cover? Is there foxing? Is that right? Are we saying because they've been There's... looking fox for forty four years? Yeah. There's there's texture on the cover with. We're still, it's all being developed. So yeah, there's a little bit of yellowing. <coughs> and, what's, and, and what's that sticker I see on the front cover? Is it hiding a different price? Are there two prices involved? Yeah, there's the original price from, is it 7p? And then we've got a little discount sticker on the top. <laughs> but obviously, you know, it's um, in the warehouse. Someone's done a good job. Yep. But yeah. Absolutely. So guys, we're counting down. I did say to everyone on um, Facebook that, um, and, and elsewhere on Twitter, Insta, and this is being recorded and we'll go out with our feed later. Um, this will be part of the um, Kickstarter program so people can be watching this later. It's fantastic. And you, by the time you watch this, if you haven't already bid and got your, your, your item in, you probably missed it because Burdis is in the room. OK, uh, I see. <laughs> and, and, and he's, he's promising to go big, big on the purchases. So I'm just going to run through a few of the things that we're going to basically be offering. So we've spoken with Dan um, and Andrew's here and Colin and Peter. And between them all, I think they've put up something like, um, and, and Filippo can't make it tonight, who unfortunately, who, who's doing the boot room boy uh, strip. Um, I think between them, they put up something like 17 pages of artwork. So I want to extend a thank you very much to them. And um, that's, that's absolutely right. Brendan mentioned as well, we've got a digital extended um, version. Okay, so that's also going to include Charlie Gillespie's um, work with Steve, which was called The Collector. Um, and that appeared in number two of the 77. So we wanted to have the 77 in original stories included, but not make it actually part of the, uh, the Blazer um, comic. So that was going to stand alone. You can buy the um, start, the, the first two issues of the 77 as well. 
We're going to have blazer t-shirts. Andrew was designing that this afternoon, weren't you, Andrew? Oh, I was indeed. Yeah, Always you haven't printed designing. one off yet, though, but there we go. Um, <laughs> no. Um, and the usual sort of things we're going to have. And there's also, Andrew, um, what's, what's, what's going free with each issue? What did we decide on in the end? It's going to be a nice big sticker, I think. You can stick it on your chopper, can't you? Stick it on your chopper, stick it on your grifter. <laughs> stick Absolutely. it on your satchel. <laughs> so Steve wanted to have the ubiquitous um, spud gum, but we couldn't find the, the, yeah. the half a million that we would need for this uh, particular um, <laughs> publication. I, I cheekily said maybe we could either have an iron-on transfer of a spud gun. Um, they were too expensive for a freebie, and I think we've ended <laughs> up with a sticker. So there we go. It's all been good fun. Um, just to let everyone know, the Kickstarter is going to run from tonight until the 20th of February um that's i believe saturday night we may well even have a rap party so we may see the same faces here vying for a position telling everybody what they bought ex or denying to the missus who might be watching what they bought no i didn't <laughs> buy the complete you know, everything um and, <laughs> and um yeah so the comic itself should be out we think the digital should be out about march certainly i think by the end of march and we've got a launch date, I think is as close to the original launch date, Steve, which wasn't it the 7th of, 7th of April, 1974. So we're going to make it as close, close as we can tonight to the 7th of April. I think that's the idea. Sounds good to me. I, I can see Paul Trimble hovering in the bottom right of my screen. Excellent. He, well, what we'll expert. do now is, guys, <laughs> yeah. I mean, everybody can unmute. Um, this is the main part of the action. Um, we'll record bits of this, and you're welcome to have a general conversation, everybody, if you want to get stuck in. I need to disappear for a minute, because I need to go and press a big red button, okay? So <laughs> chat amongst yourselves while I launch the Kickstarter. Is it the Pepsi button? button? Yeah, the Banksy button. No, the Pepsi the button. Banksy. The, uh... You're putting me oh. off, stop it. <laughs> you, haven't, you, haven't, you haven't heard about that, don't worry then. Joe Biden got rid of the, uh, the, 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 the Diet Pepsi button. Oh no, it was Diet Coke. Diet Coke, that's right. Don't worry, <laughs> you might read Don't about worry. it in the news one day. Uh, ben, Banksy, <laughs> can you, are you able, or is Skubal able to tell us how many people are actually in this conversation? Yeah, or we've had about 20 a... tonight. Um, 20 tonight, most, good. Most yeah. of them, most of them are, are, are gonna be logging off now to get open to, to the Kickstarter. Ah. So Steve, ah, thanks Steve. You're gonna show the video <laughs> now, yeah? Let's have that little 20 second video that opens the Kickstarter, shall we? Okay, Great. I've got to find the button, Steve. Go on, you do that. We'll have a look at the cover. We'll marvel at this. What a sound. Well, that's a little taster, isn't it, eh? Ooh. Zoom. And uh, Richard C, I can see those of the, and yeah, hi, you two. Brendan, of course. Hello. Guys, um, yeah, I'm going to give launched. you a taste of what's coming. Hey! Oh, yeah. hey. Right, project's live. If you want to give me the, um, the, the screen, Steve. Oh, yeah, all right. Hang on. I'm out. Go on, go to share. Yeah. <clears throat> There we go, guys. Can you see it? You'll see it in a minute. Woo! Woo! The red button. There it is. Hey. There we go. So, 29 days to go, £1,974 to get. I can't get in. Can we buy? I can show the Dominica uh, video, can't I? There we go. Picture of Steve. Look at him there, looking <laughs> handsome. <laughs> T shirt that we were mentioning earlier. Yeah, oh, I want that. Yeah, I, I, I need one of those T-shirts. I do need one of those T-shirts. Dominica, oh, here we go. Here I, she is. I need a seventy-seven T-shirt too. But oh, yeah, let's buy it, guys. You do. This is your sub editor. I like Dominica Totti's um, little picture. It's going to yeah, take a second point. to buff, buffer. Don't buffer, Ben. Silence. <laughs> no sound. She looks like Sally James from She's Was. <laughs> yeah, she... Hello, and guess what? There's a new scorching comic in town called Laser. It is coming your way and it features yours truly as a <laughs> Not only that, but I also wish out in my new sporting comic strip. 
Is that, can everybody hear that okay? Totally out of sync. Not really. Drop it out, Ben. Let me just, uh, I've got it up on my screen now. Yeah, you can do the video and do the tune. We can also, um, obviously, edit, edit this in later, yeah? I've taken the, the, the sound off now. Do you want to unshare? Back to you, Steve, okay? And we've already got our first backer. You need to get one, 1974. <laughs> right, well, I've got to get a backer in, so I'm going to be doing some stuff now. Right. You got five backers. We got five backers. How Ooh. exciting! Well, you guys should all be obviously, you know, spending your money. You know. <laughs> Hope it's just not us five doing it. Otherwise, we. <laughs> our backs, our backs, our backs. What did you I'll go with, Andy Hayes? Yeah, um, I've gone for the signs that you shown with the uh, sheer glam conspiracy novel with it as well. Very right, nice. Steve, you better get <laughs> printing some more. <laughs> that um. That one the hell? It's um, already a quarter of the way through. I'm going to ask a question. That, um... The only way to find out... Can you hear me? Yeah, is that, yeah, yeah. Is that John? It's John. Yeah. Hello, John. How you doing, mate? Not bad. That pledge where your face as an assistant editor, is that a picture or is that an art one? It can be either, John. Basically, right. we can either do it as you... We can have the genuine face in. Oh, yeah. I'll definitely do a funny face. I'm going to back that. Here we go. <laughs> well, John, <laughs> coming back on that, we had a... Brilliant one, which um, Andrew um, Sawyer's did of you and Sam, yeah, in the cell, yeah. I believe. That was that was great, wasn't it? Yeah, because I got um, Andy to do a another one of Sam, sort of this size, and that's now on Granny and Granddad's front room. Oh, wall. me, that's that fantastic. Brilliant. Pace. How are you, John? By the way, I haven't seen you for ages, mate. Not too bad. Not too bad. Excellent. Right, so we'll continue total amount. Hey, John, you don't want some um, Dan Corbin or Judge Dredd artwork, do you? Uh, well, oh, he's only in the room. He's only, he's only listening. <laughs> oh, I'll, tell you what, I'll tell you why. You know when I've just got to put my password now and I'm just trying to remember it. <laughs> I don't want to say it out That's loud. That's what so they all say. <laughs> uh, so can, I, can I ask Dan? Are you still there? You're there, mate. Yeah, mate. Yeah. Um, Okay, it's 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 perhaps a tiny bit rude, and I said if I asked a question, you didn't want to. Um, did you sell? Can I ask? Did you, are there pages for sale for rock still, or is that something which has all been done with and sorted out? Every page I do is for sale. So, um, rock pages for sale, dread pages are for sale. Perhaps because you'd like it, to tell us, mate, what's the address of your gallery, and then we'll stick it on the video. With there isn't a gallery. I have been asked that so many times. I should uh, to to, but you know when you got. 400 pages of, of, of art trying to scan them all in well trying to find a time to scan them all in and um then load them up onto a site it, it's just it's just finding the time but i have been asked so many times if i can um get a gallery with prices and, and whatnot so what i just do is say if anybody wants anything just to contact me you know via facebook messenger or something like that and um if there's a certain page they want to, just to let me know I really should get. I really should. Yeah, I really get a gallery together because I've got a website. It's just I've I've not updated that for about a year. So fantastic. If it's okay, then and I'm going to go around the room a bit and and and, and ask other people to chip in. Paul Trimble, how are you doing, fella? I'm good, mate. Thank you. Uh, hey, good Paul. Chat. We had we had a nice chat, didn't we? A hey, couple Paul, of good week to see week you, mate. So we go. How, how are things Paul. over in in, in Northern Ireland? Well, I think pretty much the same as everywhere else, COVID ways. Although, yeah. mind you, we're, uh, things are pretty bad thanks to Brexit. Uh, a lot of supplies not getting through and whatnot at the minute, but hopefully that'll all get sorted out. And obviously, you're one of our guys who um, is, is also well known for, for running um, conventions, the, the fantastic Enniskillen. Um, May, I suppose the news is that obviously it's off this year, but, but, but what are you hoping for? What are your plans? Yeah, I mean, it's, um, we, we, we kept our fingers crossed, but I think realistically, not much is going to happen this year anywhere. Uh, there's a possibility of running something on a very small scale, possibly towards the end of the year. 
just to do something, but um, you know, it, it's, everything's up in the air at the moment. I mean, really, I think we're looking at at uh, 2022 before any kind of any size of event is going to be workable. Yeah, yeah. We also but surely by, use... by by that time, don't you think by that time the convention scene's gonna explode because people are so desperate. I myself am desperate to get to a convention because you know it's been the, my last convention was January last year and it's January or February last year Cheltenham and uh, I you know you don't realize how much you miss something until it's gone do you and it's just yeah. um yeah I, I, you know meeting like-minded people every month or so it's just something uh once it's gone, it's it's, it's it, you just you just miss it so much, and like I said, twenty twenty two when it does all kick off again, it's going to be huge. It's going to be, you know, the, the whoever's going to be the first Comic Con of twenty twenty two in this country <laughs> is going to make yeah. a killing. <laughs> Absolutely. So I've got to ask a question, if you don't mind, John Burdis. I, I, the rumor is you're going as um, base nineteen ninety nine to the next convention you're <laughs> attending. Is is that true? I've ordered the top, so I've, I've paid for it. So I'm just waiting for it to be delivered. So are you going to get you're going to get one of the guns as well, which is uh, I believe replica are making. I yeah. might do. You never know. It depends what I feel like. Uh, so are you going to go as Koenig? Is that who you're going to be, Walter Koenig? No, no, no. I'm going to go on with one of the dog's bodies with the yellow sleeve. So oh, I can, yeah. I, so <laughs> not I the red sleeves. So, so you're uh, not doing his UFO with the string vest, John. I <laughs> did wear a blue string vest when I was in Norway, and I've got this picture of me, and it looks like my member of Take That just finished this. Exercise out <laughs> somewhere in the snow, sat in the room just like that. So, but yeah, that's that was like a proper string vest right to the your cuffs and everything it was fantastic. Obviously, they popped out every so often. <laughs> Sorry for the ladies who were on. Let me just check. I'm sure I saw Joe earlier. Uh, but I've, so, got to so, say, I've got to say, I reference Dan earlier because I was trying to get my pledge in then, so I didn't answer properly. <laughs> when Dan did put his uh, thing up about buying the art pages. I was going to get one, but the problem was I kept seeing people saying, oh, I've got one, I've got one. And I thought, I don't want to go through every single page and say, have you got part one, page six? And this is it. <laughs> this is it. I, this is why I've got to get a gallery together. I've got to get a gallery. Oh, I've got, get, I've got to get someone to get a gallery together for me. Yeah, <laughs> uh, because I did that it's with just... Chris Weston a long time ago when he was doing it. And I, and I just kept saying, have you got page three of this? I said, I'll tell you what, page three, page five, page two, page one. That's the yeah. one I wanted to do. So that's how I had to do it. So it was, that was the killer. Because I'm I'm a lover of any page that has lots of judges on. So if it's, and you did lots of those. I've got to say. Well, that, 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 that last John Wagner script had uh, plenty of judges and mechs and goodness what else. So it was. Yeah. Uh, but I just didn't know which ones would, were saw them in, you know what I mean? But you most see. of those ones, most of those ones, as soon as I put those pages, because one of the screenshots, well, the photo was um, lots of those pages from the Beanie story. Yeah. And um, as soon as that picture went on, within five minutes, pretty much all of those pages went, mm -hmm. people yeah. just snapping them up, yeah. which is good, yeah. which is good. Yeah, it's good. I mean, that's the best thing about a, a, a physical original artwork, isn't it? I well, yeah, think... and 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 I think uh, I think people have been desperate to get pages because there's been no conventions, obviously. Yeah. So people haven't been buying pages from, from the artists themselves at conventions, so... As soon as yeah, I haven't seen too many artists putting pages up on, you know, Facebook and the like. But um, that, maybe that's why I made such a killing that day. <laughs> well, I, I just yeah, think yeah, to physically own a piece of artwork is one of the best things because I, I always say to people, you can look at it on the comic or a, or a screen, but when you have it in your hand and you can move it on angles and see all the different textures of all, so you might Absolutely. have a little black in a, in the uniform. You move it and you see all the shades where you've done different angles. And when when, I, when yeah. I first bought, uh, my very first piece of artwork work was a Colin McNeil page. This is a black and white, black, black and white page. And um, just like you just said there, when it came for the post, I was just sitting there looking at it. And you do, you start looking at it, you look at it, you can see the faint paint pencil marks and, mm -hmm. and all that. And that's just, it, it, it's just such a nice thing to hold in your hand. And like I said, I've got nothing against digital work. I think it's, I've done some pages digitally myself, but there is something about holding original art in your hand that um, I like, and I get pages myself. Um, and and it's, it's the same as a, a, a digital comic as opposed to a physical comic. You know, I like to get physical comics and books and things like that because it's just, it's something, you know, with a cup of coffee, sitting down on the sofa or whatever. It's just something, and the smell, the smell of books and comics and 
What not? You just can't beat it, I don't think. Yeah. All right, here we go. Look at this. Can I ask him? Two, one. Which, what are you showing, Steve? What you got up? What did you see there? Yeah, look at that. One wow! Time. Straight not away, not bad. Wow! So what's the best wow. time we've done the um, seventy-seven in? Was it about four hours? Four I think. hours. Four hours. Yeah. Yeah. Well, while John's, while while sorry, while Dan's here, Whoa. Dan, mate, we sweated on rock, mate, didn't we? Dear grief, we were like looking at. It's a big total. I thought it was. Was it about twenty-four thousand? Is that right? <gasps> 20, 20, 20, 29, 28, 29, 000. 28, 29 was it? Bloody hell! Yeah. But that was. It, the the reason for that was we we the initial thought was to release them as like Rock of the Red six single issues, but um, John was doing because because obviously it, 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 drawing the pages takes a lot of time to do. Um, I didn't have a, any time to really run the Kickstarter or anything like that, so John was doing a lot of that work himself. Um, so he didn't want to run six separate Kickstarters for six separate issues because of the amount of work involved in that. Um, so we went, decided to just try I think we spoke to a lot of people in convention because it obviously uh, launched just before the convention scene stopped. Then we talked to a lot of people um, who have done Kickstarters and they said, well, it is a lot of work doing six separate ones, but if you do one big one, you know, because of John's name is such a, a, bit, a big name, the chances of them us reaching that target was quite good, but it was by the skin of the teeth. It was so close. Um, but we managed it just. We just managed it. A huge amount of money. No, yeah. It is, but 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 it's it's comics cost a lot of money to make, don't they? I suppose. When yeah. um this mm. is the thing, the printing costs and yeah, I'm pretty sure John's told me <laughs> lots of times that um <laughs> He's not made any profit yet, and in, if, in fact, he's he, he's in the red through that book. Um, but again, this that, this is because we've not been to conventions where you you know in a day you can sell thirty books, forty books, or whatever. But we've not been doing that because you've not been no. at conventions, so you can do as much yeah. selling online as you can. It's yeah. still not the same. You still can't beat going to these uh, big venues with hundreds, if not thousands, of people. No, we've been talking that a lot with the seventy-seven because when we put all you our missed, plans... you missed, you missed, you missed the launch, didn't you? At, yeah. at, at yeah. Lawless, that was it. We had Lawless sponsored. We was going to turn up there. The plans were in place. There was events, all sorts of freebies, yeah. and then suddenly it's like, ah, um, can we do this with just online? And you know, it's we're still looking at different ways of promoting and stuff. But what we're at is we've got a successful comic or a comic that's washing its face at the moment, and yet we still haven't touched conventions. So it's going to be amazing. Like, I just can't wait to get out there, to be honest. That's it. That's it. That, you know, the 77 has been launched through COVID. Rock the God was launched through yep. COVID. And they've both been good, but they could be so much better because it's hard. You, you, you can set, try to sell something through Facebook and online, but you don't get people dropping par by online. You don't get people mm -hmm. walking past your table online, whereas that's what you do at conventions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, see that product, right? Yeah, Dan, I um, I was at Alan Grant's Money Ivy convention, uh, which is where I bought the first four rocks, I think, mm. your first. And I met, and um, I put a picture on Facebook of the, the four covers and a pint of beer saying, job done, <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> but I also met, there, Christoph Rod RG Christoph, who's just above your head on my screen, anyway. And Christoph, how did you come to know Alan Grant? Because you were invited to that, weren't you? Yes, I I met Alan about twenty years ago, more or less. Uh, at the time, I was living in Chile, and I did a big convention there, and my guests were. Danny O'Neill, Alan Grant, and uh, Cam Kennedy. Uh, I wanted to, to have Batman uh, authors, and, and in this case, it was a, a kind of team. And from there, we become friends, and we met again in Buenos Aires, and then in, in, in Money Eye. Yeah. Um, and I, he, he, he encouraged me to start scripting. At the beginning, I wasn't uh, a comic writer. Um, 
I, I just have uh, some ideas and I share those ideas with, with Alan. And then Alan told me, you know what? You have to write those ideas and start doing that. So I published a couple of titles with Marcosia about 10 years ago. Funny thing is that I speak Spanish. My, my, my national language is Spanish, but my ideas were not suitable for the Spanish market or something like that. <laughs> I went to French, to France, and they said, no, this looks too American. I went to the US and they said, this looks too European. And I ended up in, in the UK. <laughs> So, yes, perfect, oh, isn't it? Perfect in the UK. The thing, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, Christoph, we're um, we're always looking for decent script writers for the seventy-seven. If you want to put into Steve's uh, book, yeah, you know, I'm I'm trying to convince a friend that is well, he he did something with me uh, a couple of years ago, and he's doing something. Well, I'm not uh, familiar with uh, Scottish uh, poems because he's Scottish. And he did something with Pat Mills, so probably he he can fit uh, in a short story very very well, I think. You know, and I, I applied to the con, con to the contest also. I did, I, I sent you a, a sort of proposal yes, for the contest. So let's see how it goes. Which is we get we're getting the launch out of the way. The uh, the finalists are being uh, announced tonight. Oh, oh we got here our target first. <laughs> And just to, just an out regarding the blazer Kickstarter guys, Dan's blazer artwork has gone already. Who's oh, got that? Well done, Dan. Dan, Dan Corwell. Someone's already snapped that up, and wow. we've already, and we've already sold a page. Was that John? Of, uh, <laughs> and we've we've sold a page of Pete Weston's uh, blazer artwork as well. So <laughs> what can I say? Quality tells. Quality tells. Carry on. Guys. Yeah, we're we're already, we're already four hundred pounds short of the total already. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic, to be honest, because uh, it, it just shows that there's a huge amount of love for Steve and also, you know, yeah. the, the retro feel of the comic, and it's great. Well, isn't, isn't it great that British comics are doing well? You know, he, you know, yes. it's just there's so much activity in the market, the British market at the moment, which is, is, is fantastic. Yeah, all we, have, right all, we to, all we used to have was just 2000 AD, for, for, yeah. which is fantastic. You know, it's the benchmark. Well, let's but, let's just spend a moment or two then. We can maybe mention some of our other favourite titles that people are, are buying. So I'll shout out to Steve Tanner, um, basically anything he does, but including Brawler, which I think is absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Love that. We also had um, Ed Doyle and Alan Holloway involved. Um, both of them have done various stories for us in the 77. Obviously, they've gone on and done the Sentinel. So I've got, I've got a T-shirt. Got the t-shirt on. Yes. Oh, yeah, you're wearing the t-shirt. Mark Montague yeah. t-shirt. Yeah, 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 the mighty Mark Montague. Oh, listen, and there we go. What about an upcoming star like Mark? I mean, you know, two years ago, was, did he get? Did he win the Art Stars or something? For yeah. He did, yeah. And he's on the cover of this week's prog as well. Not yeah, bad, exactly, not man. bad. But it, pretty, it pretty much started with Rock of the Reds, didn't it, really? Because if you look at the British indie scene again exploding, you had Rock mm -hmm. of the Reds come along, and then you had, I think you had Brawler come, issue one. There's been a big gap between that and issue two. Then we've popped and, up. Um, You've got... Future Quake, Future yeah. Quake and Star Trek. Yeah, but they, but to be fair, they're they're fanzines. But I'm talking yeah. actual indie comics, and yeah. we're in a situation there um, where we've got some fantastic indie comics. About. Kickstarter's, got Kickstarter's opened the market, isn't it? Kickstarter's really opened the market, which is what we want because the hardest part of making comics is not me sitting down drawing it or you writing it. it the hardest part is funding the. You know, yeah. a, getting the time to to fund it and 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 raising the you know the printing costs alone. Um, yeah. you can you can only think of how many co sort of project failed just because they hadn't got the initial funding before Kickstarter mm. or people started using the Kickstarter route. And mm. it, it's a tragedy, really. And it's wonderful in a way that it's going. It'd be great. It'll be even better when this when we get to the situation where indie comics don't need to use Kickstarter, and we can start selling them elsewhere. But well, that's when well, that's, that's down to publishers, though, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. But I don't think publishers are, are, are that interested. That's why. Uh, that's why we need Kickstarters. Yeah. yeah, I think Get My Comics is doing a decent job at the moment. I mean, they're shifting like well, put, no pun intended. They've got the shift. They're pushing shift at the moment, mm. and they're also like promoting our comics and I know this promoting Sentinel. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, we did oh, well it's, out. It's nice to say. Yeah, because Dave, we've got. Um, well, we hope obviously when the shops open again. Haven't we? Didn't we secure with um, what was it? Um, Forbidden Planet International, just before yeah, the shutdown. Forbidden Planet International are definitely involved. Wasn't it something like 75 comic shops are interested? Yeah. They, just, they get interested just as the full lockdown appears, and then you, 
But yeah. would you, and would I you say, I mean, right now, I mean, well. you know, it's, it's, it's breaking people's hearts, isn't it? You imagine if you're a comic shop owner, Obviously, you've got your you've got your uh, subs editions going out and such have you like sub a comic and other organisations, but you know you still got bills to pay. I'd imagine, um, and yeah, I feel really I feel really bad for friends who I know who run shops and stuff who are just obviously not 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 taking any income at the moment. You know, but I, th- I think as Dan said earlier, Pete, in terms of comic fans, they've got a lot of money burning holes in their pockets. <laughs> and I, and I, I think come next year, it's going to be very interesting for those who are willing to actually sort of grab it. You know, you're going to have to push yourselves and you're going to have to work hard. But the, if, you, if you're if you producing a quality product, I think people are going to really go hard next year, especially with the conventions. I mean, I only normally go to Lawless and I might do a Birmingham convention, but I have every I have every intention of going to Enniskillen next year. Um, uh, obviously, Lawless. I really wanted to... Yeah, all fingers crossed. I really wanted a thought bubble, you know, and 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 that's something. Still that not I've, been to that. Still not been to thought bubble. No, I've never done thought bubble as well. It's always been a bit Get too out. Cool for me. Get out a lot of years. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think Amateurs. it's going to be fun. Amateurs. Put some effort in. Oh, well, we need you. We need you to guide us, John. <laughs> your uniform. Pardon? You still fit your uniform? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I lost a t-shirt, John. Yeah. Flash. Ah. Oh. Yeah, it was one of those things where you find online and they'll put any word or phrase into a design of a t-shirt. Yeah. And I thought that'll look good with trade. Yeah. John, have if you, you got permission to do that? Mm-hmm. Have you got authorization for that shirt? I don't need any authorization. I just do it. <laughs> <laughs> he is the law. <laughs> I, I tell you, so I tell you something. Rebellion could take a t- could take a leaf out of some of John's t-shirts because oh, some, yeah. some of the t-shirts that come out are not, not the best for me. But some of John's are just the, the stitched in fantastic. Because I go to a place just down the road, um, <laughs> they're embroidered in, and they're so relatively cheap for like an for a one-off t-shirt with a stitched in design. For one t-shirt, it would be like twelve or thirteen quid. And their, and their machinery is like five times better stitch rate than you'd, you'd get normally at other places. I, right. I think I think Rebellion are missing a trick because you know how they have the 2000 AD art scans? They should have something like a sort of... Uh, a, 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 um, yeah. Get the fans to send in their ideas for T-shirts and so on and, rep- yeah. and like, yeah, merchandise. And I reckon they'd sell an absolute ton because there's so much, there's so much untapped talent out there. You've only got to look at the people who were doing absolutely nothing a year ago and are now... Semi writers and artists. I mean, some of the some of the people working for seventy seven hadn't picked up a pen for twenty years until last year, and, and you know, it, there's there's so much potential out there. Let alone the people who are breaking through, like yourselves, Dan, Andrew. You know, it's, it's, it's good stuff. Oh, um, can I say something? It's your show, Steve. You carry on, okay. mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, you're all fired. Um, <laughs> right. No, no, you're all hired. Uh, double pay, of course. A slight aberration here. Stop it. Pay them, John. Um, um, I, I live quite near Camden Market in North London, and I found out the other day that the Judge Dredd escape game, like Crystal Maze, is going to be opened there. Ah. They have applied for permission. Wouldn't it be ironic if you got lost in it, Steve, if you couldn't get out? <laughs> well, better than that. No, no, no. Better than that, I've actually written, emailed the guy who owns it. He's a French guy. Um, and said, hey, dude, I, I live 10 minutes away. You know, you've got to let me come and be part of the story. Um, even if I just punch tickets, you know, this way, <laughs> this way. <laughs> so I'm waiting to hear what this guy says i, I would be brilliant for me tell you what, Steve, you tell us what day you tell us what day you do that and if we if it's all non-covid i think we should all have a big yeah, we'll go down. and go wouldn't it be definitely brilliant, yeah? well you're <laughs> yes, all coming around my house anyway when it's non-covid you know that don't you <laughs> so it's yeah. fantastic it's guys, in the just, hotel. guys just to let you know there's only 277 left wow. <gasps> let's, let, let's get this done by but before we finish let's get that reached Oh my God. We can do it. That, what, how long have we been on? We've been on uh, just an hour. over an hour. Half an hour. We started half an hour ago, Dan. <gasps> yeah. yeah. I'm hoping it will get... be done within 45 minutes. If we can get that done. Oh, no, I know. 
of, of anybody's on their oh, phones. a big one's just gone in 1752. If anybody's on their phones right now, can they yeah. go to either Blazer's uh FB page, um, 77 or 1977 2000 AD? There's a post there with the link and everything. If you share that to everybody on your socials, yeah, then we'll have this done. I don't have a social. <laughs> <laughs> Being anti-social, Brenda. Yeah, it's your anti-socials. I don't mind. Yeah, Can I ask um, if right. Peter's um, rather fetching uh, poster of the editor is going to be released as a poster or as Go, Dominica? Yeah. yeah, that's going to be. Well, to be honest with you, um, Simon, I was chatting to uh, Peter about this this earlier. You still there, Peter? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think we left it that I was saying, yeah, definitely going to chat about it with um, Steve and the guys. And I think we will, Peter. I think what we'll do is I think we'll drop it in maybe tomorrow. I've just been a bit busy today. But yeah, you're, talking about, you're talking about the um, back page of Blazer, are you? Yeah, can I ask you, Peter, what size is the original artwork so we know we could what size we can scan it to? Oh, the, the photograph. I, I could give you a really good quality photograph. Yeah, what size did you do the original, by the way, Peter? Um, I did it A3? to the 77 dimensions. Oh, okay. So it's the standard 280 by 3... Yeah. 320. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever okay, that so it's, page, it's that size. Whatever okay. the page size is. So but I'm thinking I, got, I can I, negotiate I, with you now. Oh, absolutely. Would you be prepared to sign them and then we can have them released as signed um, prints? Yeah. But, but uh, you know, maybe it'd be better if Dom... Uh, well, I'll do it, but... Dom and Steve as well, perhaps? Yeah, it's a shame Dom hasn't been able to make it, bless her. I think she's yeah, so... busy being glamorous somewhere, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Would you guys put it on a T-shirt? Mate, we'll put anything on to make money. I'm not sure, but it'll go on our shop, I'd imagine, Simon, rather than on the Kickstarter, yeah? Yeah, but you um, well, as long ben. as you model it for us. Will you model it? <laughs> yeah. Can you wear kinky boots as well? Have you got hot pants? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, then definitely. You get the gig, okay? Okay, when you've got we'll, the get you her, um, we'll get you her wig as well, yeah? Oh, yeah, please. <laughs> um, but, but yeah. Sammy tells me you're not actually too, be feeling too bad about this. <laughs> uh, yeah, I am. Sorry. <laughs> right, we're How are we doing, Steve? Points. What are we up to, mate? We're less than £200, so if everybody's <gasps> on their socials, we should be getting there very shortly. Yeah, I was about to put it on my social. Go on, about 30 minutes. I'm going to share it on John Burdis's page. Hmm. I already shared my thing. I said I was an assistant editor there, obviously. <laughs> I said there'll be lots of, uh, people wearing, lots of people wearing shorts with my... Well, wife. I'm thinking, have you got your special shorts available to put on to, you know, no. to threaten everybody? <laughs> Please, no. No. Oh, come on. They're fantastic. We need the countdown clock, don't we? That's what we need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Moving. Wow. And we haven't really engaged Twitter yet either, I don't think. As uh, Dave, Dave wouldn't have put his post up yet, would he? I did. Um, I did I... share it and put it to the 77. I but... shared it to Twitter. Oh, yes. Yeah, um, me too. Yeah, Bill Senkovich is sharing it, so that's all good. Yeah, he's going to be a new, <laughs> a new cover artist, apparently. Let's just get a tremble sharing it. <laughs> So, Steve, did you actually write some new scripts, or are these the ones in the back of the Shiglam? Uh, the new one is the one that um, Peter has drawn called the Germanicus Ring, um, because um, Ben and the team said they needed a, a script to make it a 32 page comic. So, um, and it's been great fun working with Peter. And um, I, when you see his artwork, you'll be knocked out because um, it must have been hard for him to transition from you know, um, doing what he did to comic scripts. He, I know he told me he found it very hard, didn't you, Peter? Yes, yes. I think I've learned something for the next one. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to say, Peter, when you've finished, it's finished. You don't have to keep doing any more. <laughs> I'm sorry, that, Andrew. That damn Photoshop. It's like, oh, so one more. It's like Columbo. So one sorry. more thing. One more really, thing. Really <laughs> oh, there we go. No, it's brilliant. <laughs> Perfectionism. For an editor, then. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to ask seriously, though, Peter, as an editor, um, 
I wonder if you might be on hand to help out, perhaps. Um, we've got a guy, I'm not going to mention his name because it's, but anyway, he's come from a different background and doing an, a, a, a strip for the 77 up and coming. And I'm just wondering whether you, you might be able to sort of like give him some advice with regards to how to expand into the comic page rather than kind of dealing with just, you know, a series of um, panels, if you like. I don't know this stuff, which, because you don't come from a comics background, talking to someone yeah. who else who doesn't come from a comics background, but who's a brilliant artist, I just wonder, you know, what would you say is the biggest challenge in terms of sort of learning about comic um, uh, vocabulary in terms of the artwork? Yeah, what's, what's I, 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 you know, like, obviously... Carry on there, Pete. Um, I mean, Steve put, you know, certain pounds to directions go. into his scripts. But I kind of found, you know, we were cramming, you know, initially he said, oh, you can have as many pages as you want until I then conferred with you, Ben. And he said, ah, oh, um, <laughs> you could have a maximum of six rather than eight. So the kind of big problem, especially towards the end of Dominica's Ring, was I was having to cram an awful lot of um, dialogue into one page. And it was getting quite... I think I've ironed it out now, but it, it that was the biggest challenge, was trying to make the page look attractive, but also get what was very important dialogue. I mean, after all, it's like the denouement of the mm. I think it goes to show, story. would you agree, that the job of the letterer, if you have a letterer, if you've seen good letterers work, we use Annie Parkhouse and a few other really, really experienced guys working with us, um, is the placement of those and the way that the story flows with the bubbles either side of a head as it flows across a panel. Absolutely, I mean, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's a it's a, a, a total art in itself, lettering. I, you know, the way the, the bubbles are, are put in. And, um, you know, like the worst, I think the trouble with an artist as well is that they don't want to see their pretty pictures covered with bubbles, you know. So you've got to have someone who's slightly ruthless, I guess, to... So say, well, I, I draw the bubbles in. I draw I, I, when I, yeah, when not, not, um, I don't letter them. I look at the page when I'm laying out my page. I always look and leave and draw in what I would say is a rough size of what that bubble was going to be. Yeah, are you yeah. blue penciling them, Dan? Sorry, are you blue penciling them in such, you know, using that kind of, yeah, but it was grey pencil, okay, <laughs> not blue, yeah, but yeah. I, yeah, I, I, and I, every, every panel I do, I. I, because I've done so many pages now, I'm always thinking, where's the, 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 the bubble's going to go? Where's that bubble going to fit? Where's it, you know, um, if it, it, especially when you've got multiple people talking in the panel, trying to lay that out. And if, you, if you've got the panel beforehand and the first per person speaking is on the left, in the next panel, he could be, you know, be the third or fourth person talking, and you've got to figure out how am I going to figure all that out. So, well, bubbles is is actually one of the main things in my head. Where, where's that going to go? Because if you if you don't lay it out right, that speech bubble's going to go over the main part of the, the image. You know, the 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 the, yeah. the money shot, if you like. Yeah, yeah. I I mean, it's a. I guess it's a thing that. It, only experience, and you've obviously, Dan, you've got, got a hell of a lot of experience compared to me. Um, yeah, it's a thing. Just, just, just draw thought, them in as you're going, isn't yeah, it? It's just draw, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just figuring I, out, I, I oh, there's... I, I mean, I think I struggle with the layout of the, each page anyway. You know, I mean, it, being, it's the first <laughs> professional strip I've done. And um, yeah, I mean, it's it's just a big learning curve, you know. I mean, you can be as experienced in... What was your... What, guys, can I just interrupt? We've got one, one pound to go. Oh, yeah, one pound <laughs> away. Literally one pound away from the social. Fantastic. And it's fully 1973, Steve. Tell us about oh, wow. that year. What's <laughs> what a great <laughs> year. <laughs> what a year. I was born. <laughs> and me. <laughs> Simon, come on, order another copy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll pay a pound for a Pete Weston uh, Mekon <laughs> sketch <laughs> on the back of my uh, page. Yeah, OK. <laughs> you got it. There you, you go. It. There's your pound. <laughs> oh, well, guys. Cheers. Congratulations. Stunning.
Yes. Well done. Amazing. Woo! Give it a refresh. It'll, it'll right. So, 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 Dan, you might, you might get, you might get some money for your your, your pages now, mate. You might actually be paid. There you go. Hey. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Dan. Everyone, thank you. Everyone. No, no, I'm going to say as well. Um, this isn't going to be the last time that you're going to see some of us. Anyway, I believe. Steve, I'm not expecting to remember all of the, the media stuff that we're doing, nor Dan. But Dan, I think you're joining. Um, are you with Colin or someone on the ice cast? Oh, and we've, we've got it. We've got, we've got two done. next week, haven't we? We've got we've done two. It, guys. Yeah, we've got two next week. Boom. So we're going to be on the ice cast. As this moment is just worth savouring, guys. 2000. Fantastic. Look at that. Absolutely brilliant. Well done, yeah. well done that, Steve, Matt. Cheers, Steve. Thank you. Well done, guys. Oh, oh, that is that. spinning away. Look at that. Like your own vision. It's all for Steve yeah. Mack, and I think we can all just say that we most of us are here because of someone like Steve Mack. So thank you, Steve. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Steve. Absolutely. To you. Thank you guys. To you and Blazer. Yeah. Yeah. Well done, Steve. Cheers. Thank you. Oh, yeah, guys. Sailing her. There you yeah. go. Mm -hmm. <laughs>